So today we're going to talk about the canter seat and how to sit in the canter and then also how to kind of influence your horse's canter with how you use your seat. Be sure to check out the links below. I have a free rider assessment quiz that you can take to give you kind of a good idea of your strengths and weaknesses and hopefully give you some ideas of some goals for the year ahead and some stuff to work on with your horse. So check that out in the description and be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you get notified when I make a new video every Wednesday. So first of all, it's important to understand that the canter has three beats to it. So the first beat is the outside hind leg. And then the second beat of the canter stride is the inside hind leg and the outside front leg land together. And then the third beat is the inside front leg. So in the canter, the horse is kind of like a rocking horse. Like there's a moment where the horse's front end comes up. Then there's a moment where the horse is more or less level. And then there's a moment where the front end goes down. So because of that, your seat kind of follows this arc and this circular motion. So I like to think of your seat as going in circles and then ovals based on how you want to adjust the canter stride. So Don Carlos is going to help us demonstrate that. He's a horse that has a very good canter um, and he's learning to adjust it. So I think he's a good one to demonstrate this on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the canter. So the first thing that I feel in the canter is it's really important to just feel your horse's back and to get to where your seat is really connected to the horse's back. And you'll see if you look at my hips, how they're going in a circular motion. So my butt is going kind of from the back to the front of the saddle. And then as it goes from the back to the front of the saddle, it goes up and down. So when the horse's front end comes up, 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 and the horse's mane is flying up, my butt goes a little bit back. And when the horse's mane goes down, that's when the horse's front end is down and my butt goes towards the front of the saddle. So if I'm just doing a regular working canner, I'm thinking that my hip is kind of going in a normal circle motion. Now, if I want to make the canner stride bigger, I'm gonna think about making an oval that's more horizontal to the ground. So I'm gonna to try to make the bottom part of my oval get longer. So let me show you, I'm gonna push, 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 and there the steps got longer. My horse to get bigger in the canter, my oval's gonna get longer. So the base of my oval is going to get longer and my circle's gonna be a bit flatter so that my horse covers more ground. And then when I wanna collect the canner, I'm gonna half halt on the upbeat of the canner and my oval's gonna get shorter and taller. So it's gonna be like up, 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 up. So the base of my oval is shorter, but it's really important that my hips are still moving. So if when you collect, your hips stop, that's what happens. It's really important that as you adjust your canner, that your hips stay moving in this circle. Now the circle can change to more of an oval, more of an upright, or like here, if I'm going bigger, my oval's getting longer and flatter. Let me show you that down the long side. So if I'm gonna ride like a little medium, my oval's getting flatter at the base. Now, if I'm gonna collect, my oval's getting a little taller. It's really um, important that you first establish this circular motion and then that you remember that your hips have to stay moving in this circular motion as you adjust the canner, that you never want to lock up. 
So if you collect, your oval gets taller and shorter. And then if you want to go forward, your oval gets flatter and longer. Boy. And then same thing if I'm going to ride a half pass or do something with my canner, it's really important that your seat always stays in this circular motion. I see a lot of riders that when they go to adjust the canner or ride a half pass or do anything with the canner, they forget to um, keep moving their seat and then the horse breaks or gets stiff. So it's really important to keep thinking circles and ovals with your hips all the time in the canner. And same thing in the counter canner. I'm still thinking hips, 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 so that he knows to keep cantering. And same thing as I prepare him for a flying change. I'm still keeping my hips going. Boy. 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 So really think about that when you're riding this week. Think about circles and ovals with your seat in the canner and it will really help you um, follow the horse's motion better in the canner. It will help give your horse a little more confidence and security in the canner and it will help you get more control of being able to make the canner strides bigger and shorter and that you train your horse to follow your seat. So if, if your seat's making a short tall oval, your horse is collecting the canner. If your seat makes an oval that's flat and long, then your horse goes for more of a medium or extended canner. So don't forget to like and comment and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. The end.